Welcome to this podcast is making me thirsty. The number one destination for Seinfeld fans. This is two up and two down. Here's our producer, Chris, to start us off. All right, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, we got the season eight episode, The Pothole, to discuss. And Chris, uh, let's start with you. How about uh, your first up? Yeah, two up, two down. You got to find good and bad in every episode. That's what we do here as analysts. We're here for you. So this, listen, The Pothole, friends of the show, Steve O'Donnell, Dan O'Keefe, incredible writers. We'll get into it. Uh, February 20th of 97, 33.8 million people watched this episode. Unbelievable. And Jerry himself, I believe, ranks this as one of his favorite episodes. Is it our favorite? Let's find out. All right. First up, I'm going to go with the line. Um, <laughs> George comes back, he loses the keys, and he says, all my keys say do not duplicate. And, and Kramer and Jerry, like, completely crack up. Like and Kramer just leaves like, oh, such a sweet kid. Love that little that little scene about the don't duplicate your keys. And obviously everyone duplicates their keys. It just says that. I, no, does anyone know why they say it? I don't know. It's almost like those old uh, when you're taping a show, right? The FBI warning. But it's still everyone had a VCR, right? So for me, relatable on that one. That's my first job. Yeah, even like back then, I'm like, how do you not know? that you could copy your keys. So uh, yeah, good uh, point there. Uh, Tony, over to you. What's your first up? <laughs> uh, this, I, this is one of the least amount of ups on my page. I think I've, I've, I've had. Uh, so I'm glad he didn't take one of them right there. Uh, Cause this is actually, I like this. I laugh at this scene a lot. Uh, I'm going to rewatch. I laugh at this scene. Uh, I love the 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 crew guy, the highway guy. When George comes over to him, just a great. The guy's great. He did, he plays the part perfectly. Ohio loves to give uh, Hirschfeld some credit. He knocked it out of the park with this guy. You know uh, what are your keys doing in there? Uh, you you put them there. <laughs> Bad place to put your keys. You know, difficult job. And then George, you know, is it about the money? Uh, yeah, it's about the money. I mean, every line that guy says is perfect. Delivers it perfect. You know, we all know that guy. Whenever you're dealing with those kind of guys, they 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 they, they love playing that game. Like, ah, hey, you got a problem here, and I know let's get fixed it. So let's talk money. Uh, we've all been in that situation. You know, one of those things where you you kind of you're at the mercy of this guy. You know, what else? This guy's gonna fucking you know rake George over the coals, obviously, and he knows it. So he just has to play the game. Like, ah, bad place to put your keys. I can get them out for you if you want. Like, I just love the way that guy delivers the lines. Um, you know, then the whole yeah, it's about the money. Um, you know, we've all been there, so it, it is relatable. I mean, to a degree, uh, just in that that sense of dealing with a guy like that, uh, especially, you know, New York. He's a very New York kind of guy. I like that guy a lot. Um, so I'm glad I, I got that up out of there because that's that's my first up uh, uh, for the pothole. Yeah, that guy plays that character so well. So, yeah, good up there. Uh, Chris, over to you. What's your uh, second up? Yeah, good up. Had it as well. Uh, uh, for me, listen. These later seasons, you know, you look for lines, you look for clothing, you you look for anything. You know where I'm going? I, I'm uh, I'm just gonna go Phil Rizzuto. Okay, how could you not? I mean, you grew up with Phil. You know, the Money Store, uh, at Channel Eleven, obviously, uh, beat the traffic. Uh, you know, all time you know, won an MVP, obviously. Stories about Mick. Uh, I'm going on and on about stuff that's not related to the show at all. I get that, but that's what this brings. Okay, in 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 two words, holy cow! Right, you know, Bill White, the uh, Seaver. I mean, all his partners, uh, all wrapped up in my heart watching this. Again, nothing to do with the episode, but it matters. And I think you know, I think that's who they're going after. It's funny. I think o O'Keefe's a, a New York guy. I know he went to Harvard, but. Uh, O'Donnell's from Cleveland. This is season eight, so no Larry David. So I I'm glad they, even without Larry David, that they, they, they brought in, uh, you know, brought in that 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 New York vibe. Obviously, not bigger than Phil Rizzuto. So for me, you know, him the, them showing that thing obviously in the beginning, then it, then it got stuck, and then the water shot it up. And it's an up. We'll take it, Rizzuto. 
Yeah, absolutely. Very, uh, very good uh, nostalgic uh, reference there for Yankee fans of Phil Rizzuto. So, uh, yeah, definitely deserves an up. Uh, Tony, back to you. What's your uh, second up? I'm glad you went there. I mean, that was going to be my second up. Uh, I only wrote three down. Uh, I love, I just love, you know, everything I just said is spot on. I mean, Rizzuto holds a heart, a place in all our hearts. I mean, just he's my childhood watching Yankee games, PIX, the whole thing. Got to beat the traffic, like you said. Um, it's just great to see Rizzuto in there. Um, and and <laughs> as he said, it nothing to do with the episode, really, but got to give Rizzuto the up. So I'm glad he did. My my third up is so it's I mean, get, f- folks, we're dealing with an episode that that is we'll get there. But I got nothing for ups. You want to know my next up? I mean, you're going to laugh. Uh, it's in line with my first up. But the neighbor in the sweatpants, when, when Elaine knocks on the door. I mean, that guy makes me laugh, too. <laughs> that guy sums up the episode for everybody. Like, what? Who are you with? What do you want? Like, what is going on right now? Why are you? Like, the whole thing makes no sense. Good mustache, I remember. Good mustache, I believe. Yeah, great mustache in the sweatpants. The guy's just sitting on his couch, probably watching the Yankee game, listening to Rizzuto. All of a sudden, someone knocks on his door. He's like, what are you doing? Like, how, why are you here? Like, what's going on? Who are you with? I mean... That guy's great. I, that guy's great. Love the stash. Like O'Hara said, the guy, you know, disheveled hair, just in his sweatpants, just trying to hang out, just probably just get home from a hard day's work, eating his dinner in front of the TV, got a lane knocking on his door. Uh, yeah, love that guy. Uh, you know, who let you in? Who you with? Um, that's my second up, folks. So here's where we're going with this one. Uh, you know, I would have given Rizzuto. He gave it. So I got the sweatpants guy as my uh, my second up. All right, well, there you go. Uh, that's uh, the apartment guy as an up. All right, so uh, uh, Chris, over to you. We're going to do the downs. What's your first one? Plenty of downs. Uh, Tony probably knows where I'm going here. I might as well kick off with it. There's scenes throughout the nine-year run that you just want to turn off, okay? And this is why I'm, I'm talking top five material here, okay? You name it, the dealership, the Susie, <laughs> for least. The all of them in the janitor's closet, all four, okay, in the janitor's closet to get this stupid flounder, you know, one cue, whatever it is. She's dressed up. Jerry comes in, knocks, and it's already crowded. Kramer comes in, knocks. It's already cr- more crowded. Stomach. George, why? Well, George comes in. What? Like, is he literally Jack Henry right next door and then taking a prayer, leaving the guys? He didn't explain that. I still don't know why Kramer was there. I don't remember. Like, it's that bad. I don't know why Jerry went. He was just meeting her for this flounder. I mean, when they, I mean, talk about forced. It, this, this epitomized it. And then, you know, whatever that lady's name, Miss Alistair or something knocking and Elaine comes out. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, uh, I mean as bad as it gets. And there's been a few of these. This is right up there. Put it out the Matt Rushmore, you name it, of, of worst scenes of all time. And it was pretty tight. It was only about maybe 45 seconds. But, and then they all left. I, as bad as it gets, that janitor scene. And what, is that closet? That's, not a, I thought it was a room and it's so small. Uh, everything about it rubbing the wrong way. Uh, I, you know, I, we, we talked to Adato O'Keefe. I, I, did we ask him about that? I wish we did. I wish I had him back on. I'd love to ask about those, those four scenes, uh, to see what those guys think. But for me, eh, I had to take it first down. Now, yeah, definitely worthy of a down there. So, uh, Tony, back to you. What's your, uh, well, what's your first down? Yeah. I mean, one of the worst scenes in the show's history. Ohio just covered it all right there. Um, listen, I'm going to start at the beginning. It, it, the episode, it, it starts off with them at, well, Jerry drops it to the brush, but the, the first monk scene, just dreadful, absolutely dreadful. You know, uh, uh, whatever germs landed on him were knocked out. How many years of med school did you have? Uh, I wish, you know, the whole you're fastidious, I'll take fastidious, finicky, frissy, fastidious, I'll take fastidious, the whole conversation there. Uh, I, Their conversations in the later years, and maybe it's something to do with the the, the glossiness of these episodes in the later years. They're, the sound, everything about it is just not what it was in the earlier years. There's no more grit. There's no more darkness. There's no more, like, there's no 
it just seems like they're going through the motions of these conversations and they're just like collecting. They're just like, they're so it's going to sound weird that I'm saying they're so perfect because they're so bad. It's just like, let's just, you know, boom, we got this. We're, we're in a groove and we're singing our lines and they're going to be funny because we're Seinfeld. No, man, they're not. It's not nothing about it's good at all. Like, I don't even know where my down is in this. It's really just that original monks conversation. Just like the way it's the whole thing starts. Just the whole, you know, uh, how many years of med school did you have? Uh, I I just I hate I hate just just dragging on about how bad it is. But that 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 whole first scene just you know that's when the first introduction of the of the uh, the Phil Rizzuto thing. And then Kramer goes by a nice Nixon thing. Like yeah, Kramer's funny because he doesn't know who Phil Rizzuto. I just the whole thing, man. I, I'm having a hard time really articulating how bad it is. But I hope I'm getting it across because it's just a terrible scene, and it just starts the the downward spiral of this episode of just uh just just horrible it just really is bad i just there's no way else to say it <laughs> that's my down all right thank you tony uh chris back to you what is your uh second down yeah i got plenty and i i mentioned the janitor and i think we know who the anchor was there so i'll i'll lay off and i, I tony's probably not gonna mind this but i'm just gonna take the george storyline can i do that i mean it i, I He's at the Yankees now, right? Executive, decent paying job, whatever. And he lost his key. So he lost his keys. Like, it's not the end of the world. People do it. It happens, you know. So you go, you, like, no offense. What does he have keys for? Just his apartment? So just go to the landlord, get keys. I, I don't think he's a car at this point, correct? Um, you know, if, if he lost the keys, or is he upset that Simon's going to mad he lost the Rizzuto thing? I don't think so. We built a whole episode on this. You know, and he, he's jackhammering? What, what are we doing here? I mean, eh. listen, all the storylines are pretty rough, but uh, I'll focus on the George one just because it's it's probably the most pointless. The others, like, you know, as, you know, I don't want to, well, we'll get into it in the grade, but his was the most pointless of the storylines. And, if he didn't have Rizzuto, I mean, forget about it. Like, that was it. Like, and then him retracing his steps. Oh, and like, there's no way he would he would figure that out and find that little pothole. And not only that, that stuff dries up and gets hard real quick. That's not rubber. You know, I worked for the highway department. I, I get that, that's That's done, baby. There's no way he's touching Phil Rizzuto and it's making a noise. So that's a whole other thing. So... For me, the George storyline, a uh, large down. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Uh, and Tony, back to you. Give us your, uh, again, your your final uh, down here, even though there's more than one that you probably want to mention. Uh, as Ohara mentioned, all the storylines are bad. Um, uh, the, the, the George is bad. I mean, Elaine's is obviously the worst, but they're all terrible. Um, I, I, I'm going to just, <laughs> I started at the start. I'm ending at the end. Uh, I, why are you dragging Newman into this? Why are we even dragging Newman into this? I mean, everyone loves that gif of him driving. The thing's on fire or whatever. I, I, I can't do it, man. The ending of this. And then somehow at the end, he's walking and Kramer, you want to go to the coffee shop? I don't think Newman's ever set foot in Monks. I, have you ever seen Newman and Monks? Maybe once, twice, something like that. He doesn't meet Newman and Monks. That doesn't happen. That always threw me off. I didn't remember until right now when I rewatched it. But I, I, I just think, from from start to finish, the episode's so bad that I wanted to kind of tie that together for my downs because I knew O'Hara would cover the the janitor thing. If he didn't, I would have. But that's obviously the worst scene of all. I was going to talk about the jackhammering with George and her walking by, but it kind of ties into the closet that he's talking about. I didn't want to go there, but while we're there, I mean, what are we doing? Well, they're all blue collar people, and George and Elaine's got the, the stuff, and this whole episode is Elaine trying to get fish. What? What is she getting it every day? Like, come on. She was blacklisted with dead Isaac cough with that whole other thing. I get that. What are we doing? I, this is the O episode, right? The O's O'Keefe. I love O'Keefe. I love O'Donnell. They're, they're, they're icons. O'Donnell's an icon. This episode is, is just, it's so bad. It's just so bad. A, a lot of rehashed things in this with the rehashed premises, very similar to the back blacklist, the race, uh, the pecan with the doodle, kind of similar to this, kind of Jerry's germ stuff. Um, I think I think jiggle is mentioned in this. You got to jiggle it. They throw that in there. 
the hard labor fantasy camp they throw in there, whole garbage of the dump they throw in there. I'm not giving my grade right now. I just realized, but those are all my down. I mean, it's the last down, so I'll just go off a little bit. Like that's what they do in these later episodes. They they take pieces from the other episodes that they like and they just throw them in and and they call it a day. And you know they got to feed the monkey at this point. It's season eight. The the machine's moving right. It's cranking, but. I mean, terrible from start to finish. Those are my, that's my down. The, the, the final scene, there's just, just no reason to even bring Newman into this. Uh, you know, like it's not saving it. I'm sorry. Uh, that's my down. Yeah. I, I never even liked that Newman scene anyway, either. So, all right. Thank you. Uh, so Chris, uh, wrap it up, give us your grade and let's be done with it. <laughs> oh, the humanity. Yeah. I mean, if, I feel I got Tony's grade there. Yeah. I mean, he mentioned it. We didn't even mention Kramer storyline, the adopt the highway thing. And, and the thing that always threw me off, the, the Arthur uh, Burkhart Highway, I, I, I had to look that up. I'm like, there's no Arthur Burkhart Highway in New York City. So that was just, they were throwing a bone to some actor who tried out for an audition for a role several times and never got it, which I don't know. Those are like another inside joke there. Just say it's the FDR. Like, what are we doing here? Um, or the West Side Highway. Like why we, or, you know, I don't know. It, that never sat well with me. Kramer adopting the highway and bringing all the signs and like, yeah, we all see those signs, but okay. And then the, the Chinese delivery guy taking back the cooked food from Elaine. Well, who would do that? You gotta be kidding me. So yeah, that whole storyline, like, and they, they tried to explain like Elaine's like, I'm not going to sit, sit there by myself eating. So that's why she kept get, having to order it. But like, she still has to cross the street. Uh, the, the dementia conversation with Jerry and Elaine, terrible. Um, but you said, I think I mentioned the janitor in the closet, but that, I don't know, maybe it's six seconds, Elaine with the dragging the rugs or whatever it was, and then and, and then George with the jackhammering, it, you, you hit the power button right there. It, it's that simple. So... It's an F. <laughs> I want to tell you, the bottle's an F. I mean, let's just cut to the chase here. Uh, love O'Donnell, love O'Keefe. This one got mailed in. You know, for Jerry to say this is one of his favorite episodes, uh, what's he smoking? It, it, come on. So easy F, clean F for the bottle. Maybe Jerry's trying to save it by saying it, it's his favorite so that people watch it more, but who knows? Whatever. All right, uh, Tony, uh, over to you. Give us your last and final impressions. Yeah, we were told, I think, by – I forgot who told us now. We've gone through so many episodes of this podcast, but they had the most expensive shot in the whole series or something, the above shot of the Rizzuto thing coming out from the toilet. They wasted their money. I mean, if that was the most expensive shot, then this is the worst. I mean, if you want to talk about, like, money, to what you paid to what you got. I mean, this is obviously the worst episode. They paid the most for it for some reason. O'Hara covered it all. I mean, there's not much left on my sheet that I didn't already cover uh, you know, before. One more for you. It, it, Jerry, I forgot about Jerry. He can't kiss. What's her name? Is it? Come on. Kristen, Kristen Davis. Yeah, Kristen yeah. Davis. Kristen or Jenna. Davis. Love to have her on the program. I mean, worse than he can't kiss her, the whole going through his whole, uh, whole apartment and getting rid of everything. I mean, enough is enough, man. I believe they, they, they've done similar things than that in, in the past. Uh, it's just, it, we get it. Jerry's neat. Great. Uh it's an F if you haven't noticed the pothole is an F for me too. Uh, this is, if it can go lower, I probably would. This is, this is bottom of the barrel. Um, you know, the nod to Rizzuto we love and I get my two ups were <laughs> two bit characters that just gave a couple of lines and they really, they stole the show in my opinion. I love to get those two guys on. Uh, but yeah, I mean the pothole is an F that's, that's all there is to it. Not worth hammering it any longer. Yeah, let's uh, let's bury this one and and move on to the next one. So we do appreciate everybody joining us again for another episode of Two Up and Two Down. And we'll see everybody on the next one.